Namaskar everyone. So welcome to our morning meditation, Monday morning meditation. Thank you all for joining in today. It's a beautiful day. So welcome to my balcony. What is the joy to be with you on a Monday? Let's create or cultivate this atmosphere of uh, meditation. Just center in that beautiful silence of being. Silence is already within you. Peace is already within you. Joy is already within you. Love is already within you. If only you would believe it. <laughs> if only you would hold it as a possibility in your space. It's already there. And that is the irony of it. it although it's there, we, we, we don't see it. We, don't, we overlook it. We don't uh, think it's possible that there can be such peace within our being when the mind is all over the place. Yeah, join me. I can actually feel your energy co-creating with me. The more you come into that co-creative space with me, loving heart, peaceful mind, and don't forget to revitalize the body as you sit or you stand or you move, just breathe. And the key to breathing, breathing is, a, is quite an exciting uh, practice. The key to breathing is to breathe out first, empty before you fill. Breathe out the stale air and just breathe in the fresh, beautiful air. Whether you breathe out through the mouth or through the nose, or breathe in through the nose with joy. And begin to realize uh, the power of the breath to revitalize your being, to bring more vitality into your being at every level, mental, emotional, at every, in every part of you. And then if you feel there's a lot of stele in there, or a lot of domestic energy, inertia, <laughs> Just breathe out. Most importantly is to hold a mind that is peaceful and managed. Don't allow your mind 
to get the better of you, to take your power away, all the old thoughts, all the old conditioning, and you can see that. You have the ability to see that. And that is the whole idea of the, the mindfulness practice, is that we are able to observe every l level of being, the mental field, the emotional field, the field of vitality, the field of intentions and desires, that we are able to, to, to observe that. And they are all energies. And uh, we need to manage them because if they are out of balance, we never feel good in our, in our being. So the whole idea is deepening the center of being, the center of looking, the center of experience, the center of observing, to deepen that center of being. Okay, for today I want to follow up from my talk of uh, yesterday where I, where I spoke of the need for expanding the consciousness and the need to make connection with that power inside of you. Do you feel a power inside of you? Do you feel a God power inside of you? Or do you feel a higher power inside of you? Or do you feel a higher self inside of you? It's always present. It's the power that you tap into every time you think, every time you generate an emotion. Every time you create a desire, every time you create a template or a vision, you are tapping into that uh, power within you to do that. Are, are you able to recognize that you tap into a power, that this energy is not yours, this energy is coming to you? And you know that, that during sleep every night, when you are deep sleeping, not dream sleeping, deep sleeping, you are able to sleep in that beautiful state of energy that replenishes your soul and um, allows the body to repair itself, restore itself. So that deep sleep is very necessary. And the best hours for deep sleeping in terms of circadian rhythm, uh, in the Chinese sense, in the meridian sense, is from 11 to 3. That should be solid, deep sleep as much as you can. You can have it. So you, we need to make connection with that deeper power. That, uh, that we really get deeper into our practices when we can feel that we are connecting to some power and tapping into it. Of course, it's a power of greater intelligence. Um, greater consciousness, when we begin to tap there more and more, our consciousness expands. But that connection is extremely important, making that vital connection. And when you make it, something magical happens, we call it flow. That you feel carried, you feel, whatever you do, you feel carried by it. But of course, if you are in conflict with, with how that energy is flowing, um, the, let's say your ego wants to do what it wants to do and it's not making connection with that greater power inside of you that is having its own play. And that's what we call the karmic play. Um, the play of that power and the play that we try to make with our ego. Um, the action and reaction from that. Uh, that, that is what creates the, the karmic play. And that we, we create karmas when we, when we operate with the ego, performing actions based on our own will. When we flow with divine will, then we may not create karmas if, if we have no desire, but just following that the universe um, and its desire. That, that is how we break the karma chain, by learning to be in flow with the universe, in sync with the universe, in harmony with the universe. But first we need to read how the universe is moving. And we see it because sometimes we may have our own plan. You know, there's a saying that the human being, humankind, proposes, but the divine dis disposes. Um, so we, uh, our will, uh, should not be in conflict with divine will. That's why the Christ said, let thy will be done, let thy will 
that heavenly will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in the heavenly realm. And so we take our cue from that. Let the divine flow in and through us. When we do that, we have the best. Well, and, and, and we break the karmic bonds because we are flowing with the universe, not with our own ego. So even though it's a righteous ego, it may still not be um, following the play of the universe. Uh, for example, when we want to do things and it's not working out, and um, we don't think it's a matter of divine timing, that the, the karmic play doesn't, is not allowing it. We try to push, 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 and um, eventually we end up in pain and misery. Uh, but if we waited on karmic time, doing what we can do when when things may not be working out, we choose our other avenues, test other avenues until we can feel that something is flowing and we stay with that. And if nothing is flowing, then we stay and consolidate our, our gains, build our strengths and, um, and wait. The time will come. So always there is divine timing, cosmic timing, universal timing, and that is we should never be in conflict with it. So we need to be able to read the play of the universe. So that kind of connection is extremely important. Your day becomes different when you're in that flow. I will never make a decision without, um, without holding it in the divine and waiting for the divine to give me the green light. Because uh, if I do it on my own, I don't feel comfortable, but when I do it in the divine, I see how everything works with perfection. So when things are not working out the way you want to, then it is, it is um, in the divine play. So just wait for your moment, begin to observe the karmic timing or the universal timing. So it's absolutely, absolutely beautiful when we're able to be in that in flow. So how do we make divine connection? How do we make that connection that we can feel more assured, more certain about our actions, and we can be more in flow? Um, the first, it's association with those whom we see it in. That divine connection or that divine flow, they are operating with that divine connection or divine flow. You see it in them, their eyes are brighter, their words are different, their actions are more inspiring. So when we see that in people, then we know that we are in the right company. And, um, or tapping into that divine space inside, you know, holding things in that divine space until we can actually feel the green light or the go ahead. We need to do that out of practices that, that uh, detach us from the world so we can stay um, more within uh, in our search for that divine connection and to not be distracted by the things around us because um, the energies of the space also are in our energy field. So we need to be very, very careful about the influence of the energy fields outside, um, distracting us. Uh, so that is what is important. So that divine connection is extremely important in the play. And, um, you see it in the Bhagavad Gita, for example, where uh, uh, Arjuna chose uh, Krishna to be his charioteer in, in the battle. So he chose the divine to be w with him, which means that he, he would he'd be counseled by the divine, he would be guided by the divine. So in life too, we need to choose the divine as our charioteer, as our guide. And. Um, You hear the Christ say to him, and I do nothing except uh, through the will of the Father, um, that my Father and I are one, that he stayed in the oneness of, of, of that connection with the divine as he acted. So we too must find that same kind of relationship with the divine. It's a beautiful world. I mean, you can see it. Look at, look at how beautiful nature is. Absolute beauty in everything, in the sky. In the sky, look, look at the beauty of life itself. 
in the flower. In nature, look at all the trees, look at the intelligence of nature. You can absolutely see the beautiful and intelligent nature. And we too, everything within our being, everything within our being, it's uh, intelligent. Every cell within our body, the whole uh, body system is intelligent. Uh, so it's incredibly intelligent. So it, it's just, just simply a beauty to be able to live the human experience and really um, appreciate it. Appreciate the kind of intelligence that is within your being and around you. Uh, you, live, you live in a world of uh, supreme intelligence. Um, when you look at the creation of anything, whether it's an ant or flower or petal of the flower, or a plant and you see intelligence, you, oh, oh, you hold the soil and you see it. Everything, everything um, expresses that, that marvelous in intelligence. So making that connection today as you begin your day is extremely important. Staying in that connection is, is more important. And, and associating with the right people, protecting yourself in the in the, the spaces where the energy may not be yours by either repeating affirmations or your mantra or staying in that divine uh, connection that you would have gained from your meditation in the morning and uh, make sure you eat, you eat foods that uh, sustain your vitality and not, depletes you, and not deplete you. So there are many things you can do and, and during your day as you operate take breaks where you can re-energize, revitalize, hydrate and uh, restore the mind, the mental energies. So stay in that connection. Stay in that connection, it's important. That connection with the divine. And let me just take you into a few minutes of, uh, of the silence. I'll guide you. <laughs> so though I'm speaking, I'm speaking from that state of silence. I can feel the, the great silence in the background of my mind. Behind my voice, there is silence. Behind your voice, there can be silence too, if you only you'd, you'd recognize that it's there. And don't get so uh, taken up with the busyness of the mind. When I close my eyes, when I center in the inner space, then I, 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 want to, I want to breathe. And in that breath, I want to revitalize the body because I open the belly to breathe, I open the chest to breathe, I breathe into the throat. And I appreciate the saying that breath is life, breath is life force, breath is prana, oxygen. So I revitalize the body, it makes my silence better. It makes my vitality across the body better. Now you can hear the parts quacking in the background. <laughs> but it's all, all part of the beauty. And then finding the breath and, and creating harmony in the breath. Just breathing out slowly and breathing in slowly and deeply. And you can do that in anything you're doing. Even if you're sitting at a desk or even if you are out in nature, y you can just breathe out and breathe in. Creating a rhythm and flow. You know, your breath has a natural rhythm. <laughs> when you're in deep sleep and your ego is out of the way, the, the, body, the body breathes just so naturally and beautifully. If you watch a person deep sleeping, you'll see how the breath flows so beautifully, so naturally. That's a divine breath. When the ego comes, then the breath becomes restless. 
unless you synchronize with that natural state of the breath. Meditation brings you back to that natural state of the breath, as though you're deep sleeping and the breath is just flowing with a minimum of effort. And that brings the meditation state so beautifully. Into your awareness. And if you wish, you can bring an affirmation in there. Peace, love, Om, Soham, Om Guru. Indescribable feeling of joy, of vitality in the body, of peace, of oneness with life. The wind is blowing in me and I can appreciate it. Observing nature is so beautiful, I can appreciate it. Feeling the intelligence of every cell, the activity of the body, heart beating, nerve cells firing, lungs breathing, stomach working. Meditation at its at its best. Isn't it beautiful? Just the ecstasy of being. And now just open up your consciousness so that we can See a little prayer for our world today. And I will use a beautiful Sanskrit prayer. 
Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, may all be happy. Sarve Santu Niramayaha, may all be healthy. Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, may all see only that which is good. Ma Kashti Dukha Bhagavad, I may no one be in sorrow. And a prayer of protection, nourishment, strength, wisdom, and unity. Om Sahana Bhavatu, may we be protected together. Sahana Bhunaktu, may we be nourished together. Sahaviriyam Karavavahe, may we be strong together. Tejasvinavaritamastu, may we be wise together. Ma Vidvishavahe, may we always be in unity, beyond diversity. Om Shanti, peace. Shanti, peace. Shanti, peace. So thank you everyone for joining in today. I want to wish you a happy Monday wherever you are. Let's make the week an amazing week. Have a blessed day everyone. My soul bows to you. To your divinity. Namaskar.